Well, thank you, and thank you to the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for inviting me to, uh, to talk about the exchange today and really kind of help explain where the city's going and what our intentions are and uh, what we hope to achieve. So the insurance exchange is a way for people to purchase insurance um, to be uh, more readily available to understand the different insurance companies that are selling the, the uh, insurance on the market. But ultimately what it is is to, to get your federal subsidy. So if somebody qualifies for a subsidy through the Affordable Care Act, then what they can do is they can go to the exchange and get that subsidy um, to help them purchase insurance. It's an extremely uh, important tool um, because a good portion of the population, everybody under 400% of the federal poverty level, will have to go to the exchange in order to get this subsidy to help them afford the coverage that they need. Um, I believe that in the District of Columbia we're going to do it a little bit different than anywhere else. We're going to have an exchange that will uh, be the sole marketplace to purchase insurance coverage. Um, and this is because we don't have a very large pool of um, participants that is going to make the risk diverse enough. So you have to actually have more people in the exchange in order to make it work. Um, so we're going to close the outside market. People will not be able to purchase insurance on the, in, you know, the kind of independent uh, market that private insurance is currently using. Um, and that's true for small businesses as well as for individuals. So it's, um, it's going to be a whole new kind of marketplace. It's going to be a new way to do it. But if the uh, government does it right, if the exchange uh, comes together as the exchange authority can and really create an atmosphere that people think is uh, possible to use, um, and is easy to use, then I think we'll see a successful exchange. So the way the bill is written uh, in, on Congress and the way it's been enacted by the President, there will be qualified health plans. Qualified health plans will have to go through an application process and come on to the exchange. In the District of Columbia, there are right now, I believe, four companies that are coming on to the exchange to begin with. They will be starting in October of this year. Um, that's uh, Care First, Aetna, um, I believe it's United and Kaiser, um, and there's maybe even Cigna, but I'm not sure. Um, those companies basically will put forth um, pro, you know, plans for people to actually uh, purchase um, and get coverage at different metal levels, and that's called metal like bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Um, they'll be able to purchase those at different coverage levels uh, at each one, and each is a little bit more expensive than the other. Um, so each company will likely put three or four options on each metal level for people to pick from um, to move around in and to actually offer them. Interestingly, individuals is one thing, because an individual will now go to the exchange on their own, they'll purchase the coverage, they may or may not get a subsidy from the federal government, but that's where they'll get their coverage. For a small business or even a large business, it's a little bit trickier, because uh, right now what you do is you purchase insurance with a broker usually, uh, you spend time understanding all your options, you go through the options over and over again, and then you lock in for a year or sometimes longer to try to you know, make sure that all your employees have the coverage they need. Um, some Companies do it uh, for altruistic reasons. They cover 100%. Some of them do what they have to do in order to survive, which is maybe they have some cost sharing with their employees, 20% or something like that. Um, they're going to be able to do a similar thing on the exchange, although it's not going to be simple. Um, I'm not sure how the brokers will be engaged in it, but that's still to be determined. Uh, hopefully they'll have a role to play because they've been such valuable partners in this effort. Um, but ultimately the small business or the, even the large business will have to decide what level coverage they want to offer their, uh, you know, their employees. Uh, bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. Once they've picked in that metal level, what they're trying to do with the exchange authority is allow for people then, the employer purchases bronze, allow for employees to buy any of the company's coverage that they would like within that coverage. That's right, a company could pay a certain percentage for their employees um, and then the employee cover the rest 
Um, companies that are less than 50 employees don't have a uh, penalty if they don't provide adequate coverage by the government. So they can provide maybe a smaller percentage and then get the rest of the coverage on the exchange even through a subsidy. And that's probably how a lot of the smaller businesses will have to do it. Another way to do it is dropping insurance coverage altogether, uh, increasing salaries of your employees, uh, having the employees go on their own as individuals to the exchange and get coverage through that way. Um, it's a lot of questions. It's coming up really fast. Uh, uh, like I said, this October uh, the exchange will start accepting enrollees. Next January we have the individual mandate that kicks in. Of course that's a national deal where every single person must have coverage, but it also says that every single insurance company must cover everyone that comes to them. That's a guaranteed issue where you can't deny somebody for pre-existing conditions or other reasons. It's extremely valuable. It's, you know, that's what makes the ACA so, so good. The, the exchange will apply uh, in stages, from what I understand, in the way that it's being set up. Some to companies that are 50 and below almost immediately, um, and then in a couple years it'll expand to companies that have 100 and below employees, and then after that, this is still to be discussed. And I'll and I, and I explain it this way. Most of the companies that have more than 100 employees are self-insured. You know, they, they don't have insurance through a regular carrier. They insure themselves and they carry their own risk. Under ERISA, which is another federal law, these companies are protected and are not included in the ACA. So they will continue to purchase the way they've been purchasing uh, in the past. Um, how that works out with a closed outside market in the District of Columbia is still to be determined and um, I imagine they're just going to kind of see how it plays out over the years because they don't have to address that concern immediately. But uh, smaller companies, certainly under 50 and eventually under 100, will phase in slowly over the next year or two as they renew to get coverage in the exchange. And they'll go through the exchange to do this um, because there won't be another option outside the exchange to go purchase. So if you're a small company, you won't be able to go to Aetna and say, we want to negotiate a deal with you through our broker like you do now. You'll have to go through the exchange, at which point, you know, we all hope that it's really, you know, effective and efficient, you know, website, that all the back end is working really well, that they, you know, process claims quickly. All the things that are complicated to do, they're taking on and they're doing it in a quick way. Uh, it's why I've been a little worried about it, but at the same time, I think as we, you know, unroll this, we're not getting in too deep and we'll be able to undo some things if we have to.